Hey, what's up guys? This is Tenoy Senha, back here with another Civ 4 Beyond the Sword playthrough. A uh, new kind of video, I'm actually going to take a quick 5-10 to 10 minute break, and I wanted to walk through um, a specific comment that somebody left on one of my videos. Um, it was really interesting, and I just wanted to kind of run through what my thought process was surrounding it. It was uh, left by the Mian team. Uh, it was about slavery mechanics, and uh, you know, if you don't know who the Mian team is, he's just one of the best Civ 4 players out there. He's really fun to watch. He does his own Let's Plays, and uh, he's an avid member of the Civ Fanatics community. So, um, if, if you don't know who he is, definitely check his videos that he's extremely intelligent and a great, great, great player. Uh, but he made this comment, and I actually uh, don't quite agree with this comment. He said, um, whipping is an efficiency question, not a can I make enough units question. Grass Hill mines beat slavery always. Without a granary, whipping is usually bad. With a granary, whips beats plains hills until population 6, where they even out. Um, there were a lot of questions that I had about this. I actually don't think a lot of this stuff is true. I do think the one statement that he made, whipping is an efficiency question, not a can I make enough units question, is extremely true. Um, and let's let's go into exactly what he means by that. Um, in order to test that, I made this, this test map. Um, I had to do a couple of hacky things to get it together, so it's going to have some weird behavior. Don't worry about that. But um, the purpose of the test is to figure out how a plains hill does up against a grassland hill. So I have, uh, you know, just these plain cities there. They, one has a grassland hill, one has a plains hill. I'm just going to keep them at one population, and I'm going to work archers. Or I'm going to make archers, and in one city I'm going to use slavery, and in one I'm not. Now, when the Mian team says whipping is an efficiency question, he means that, you know, slavery allows you to convert food into hammers. The rate at which it allows you to convert food into hammers depends on how big your city is, um, you know, what kind of tiles you're working. And, uh, and and some other incidental effects, but mainly those two effects. Um, what does that mean? Well, so I have this one food, one surplus food tile that I'm working. If I work a two food tile, it's going to take me 11 turns to grow, because I get two surplus food. If I work a one food tile, aka a grassland hills mine, it's going to take me 22 turns to grow. Now, I know that one population is worth 30 hammers to me in terms of slavery, right? So I, I can whip a population for 30 hammers. So, because I know that, and because I know how long it's going to take me to grow, I can figure out generally how many hammers I'm making per food that I work. It takes me 22 turns to grow at this size. I'm going to get 30 hammers from that 22 turns of growth. 30 divided by 22 is 1.36 repeating, so 1.4-ish. Well, that indicates to me is that this grassland hill's mine, if I whip every time that I grow, is not actually worth one food and three hammers. I can actually think of that one food as 1.3 or 1.4 hammers. So this is actually a 4.4 hammer tile. It's one way to think about it, and I think that's the right way to think about it. Uh, if you go over to this plains hill, this is just a 4 hammer tile. This is very predictable, easy to analyze. I know I'm going to get an arch every 5 turns until the end of time. Um, slavery is actually going to allow me to convert the food that I get from this grassland hills into more hammers in the long term. And, uh, you know, if you don't believe me, let's just do it. Um, going to go ahead and work these cities for 20 turns. Um, and this is what I was mentioning about the weird, you know, stuff. I had to enable, like, all technologies, so I have a triple holy city. Uh, so, you know, don't worry about that. It doesn't affect the test. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to churn out these archers as quickly as possible. I'm going to stop the game really briefly uh, one turn before Lundi grows. And we'll just take a look. So here we are. It's been 21 turns since we started. Uh, let's look at what the city has. It's got four archers. So that means it generated 100 hammers. And uh, it's got one archer at five. So that's uh, 105 hammers. Right? Pretty straightforward. It took 11 turns for us to generate 105 hammers. Um, or sorry, 21 turns. Uh, Alundi, what do you got? You've got three archers. So that's 75 hammers plus 9 banked, 75 plus 9 is 84 hammers, so it took me 21 turns to generate 84 hammers. Makes sense, I was making 4 hammers here, 5 hammers there, pretty basic. Next turn, everything changes. Now, I can whip. So, if I just look at how many archers I have now, it's uh, uh, 75 hammers here, plus the 13 that I have banked, that's 88 total hammers. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this population, which cost me 22 food to get, into 30 hammers right now. Bingo. 30 hammers. Now I've got 43 hammers here, plus the 75, right? So that's 118, I believe. 
over here, I've got 110. So that whipping allowed me to get an 8 hammer um, boost over this city. I converted all my food into uh, hammers at a more attractive rate than just, you know, getting one hammer a turn. Uh, if you don't believe me, let's uh, go ahead and play it out. Let's see how many archers I get built. So one archer is going to come out immediately. Another archer is going to come out immediately. Let's go ahead and let this archer come out. I've got five archers here now. Zero hammers banked. Here I've got five archers. Five hammers banked. Right? So what happened? Well, how, I mean, how does the city have more hammers? It's because I converted that food into hammers. And that food converts at the rate of 1.4 when I'm at population 1. This takes me 22 turns to grow. Pretty straightforward concept. How do granaries affect that? Well, oh, actually, let's talk about let's talk about the, the population 6 issue again. The me and team mentioned that something changes at population 6. I believe that that is true. Um, it has to do with how much food it takes for you to grow at every population. At population 1, it takes 22 food to grow. At population 2, it takes 24 food to grow. Population 3, 26 food. Population 4, 28 food. Population 5, it takes 30 food to grow. So that's really interesting, right? Because I get 30 hammers from every population. So if I have a city at population 5, let's say Alundi was a population 5, I could work this grassland hill, and let's say I was food, you know, like I had, you know, four guys working these grasslands, so I, had, I was covering all my food. I had one grassland mine working, so that's one surplus food. It's going to take me 30 turns to get another population. In 30 turns, I can get 30 hammers. One hammer a turn. Population 5 is when a grassland hill's mine equals a plains hill mine. If you whip, you know, every time you grow. Population 6, it now takes 32 food to grow. So that means that now my Plains Hill mine is going to be better than my Grassland Hills mine. Because this one food that I get, I can only convert that into 30 hammers after I get 32 turns to grow. All right, so 30 hammers after 32 turns is a little bit less than a hammer a turn. So... Yeah, really technical stuff, but I think this is really important. These kinds of mechanics that let you understand exactly what you're doing in this game. This game is really just you converting, you know, one kind of resource into another, looking for places where you can do arbitrage there. A very early game, before you even have a granary, converting food into hammers with slavery is a way for you to get some amount of arbitrage, because that food is just, it converts to hammers so well. Let's take a look at how a granary affects this. Granary has an extremely strong impact on this, this food to hammer conversion. So I got this other save here, I'm going to load it up. Uh, here we go. So now this is a Lundi. It's the same Alundi, right? And actually let me let me go ahead and get rid of all this stuff. Um, so do that. And then I believe I need to get you building an archer. N none of this stuff really matters. I'm just trying to set up a situation that is ideal for us. So here I'm building um, an archer. Same city. It's uh, you know, I'm gonna. It's gonna take me five turns to put out an archer. Uh, but here I have a Lundi, and I'm pretending as if I got to um, population one with a granary. A granary provides 50% um, of food after growth. What that means is it'll set you to 50% of the way to growth um, every time you get another population. So at population one, that I mean, you can't technically do that because it's population one. But I'm I'm keeping it simple for the purposes of analysis. I would have 11 out of 22 food, which means that with a one surplus food tile. I'm growing every 11 turns, right? So every 11 turns, I get to, to whip out 30 hammers. That's huge. Remember, remember, it was 22 turns before for Ulundi. Now it's 11 turns. 30 divided by 11 is something like 2.7. So my argument here is that this grassland plains, uh, grassland hills mine is actually a 5.7 hammer tile. Way better than a 4 hammer tile. Let's take a look. Um, we're just going to grow, and uh, we'll see where Ulundi is at one turn before growth. So, yeah, here we go. One archer's out. It's 25 hammers. We've got 15 banked. 40 hammers, right? 10 turns, and in in 10 turns I generated 40 hammers. Pretty much what we expected. Here, 
It's been 10 turns. I'm gaining 5 hammers a turn. That's 50 hammers. It's 2 archers, right? So 2 archers, 50 hammers, pretty straightforward. 10 turns, 5 hammers a turn, 50 hammers. Straightforward stuff. Next turn, let's see what happens. Now I can whip. Let's go ahead and do that. Boom. 49 hammers now because I got an extra 30 hammers from whipping. 49 plus 25 is 74. So 74 total hammers for Lundi. This is 55 total hammers for this other city. Right, so that's, a, that's a, almost like a 20 hammer difference. Only 10 turns. Right, that's huge. Let's keep going. Let's keep growing. Alundi's going to grow again, and you're, you're going to see just how many more archers I can generate. Um, almost there. Let's look at Alundi again. This is before I'm going to whip, right? So this is when, theoretically, I am... I should be my weakest compared to the Plains Hammer City because I have all of this food waiting to get converted into hammers. Four archers, that's 100, plus 11. So I have 111 hammers here. Let's check out this guy. I have 105. So I'm, all, I'm still beating this city even though I should theoretically be worse off. Um, or I should be at my worst relative to the um, Hammer City. Gonna whip this guy out. How many hammers do I have? Boom, 45. 100 in archers, 145 hammers. How many do I have over here? 110. So I'm burying this guy by 35 hammers. Let's just go a couple turns and see what happens. Now I've got, uh, well we can go one more turn actually. Um, I've got f five archers here. And I've got six archers here. I've got seven hammers banked. Five hammers banked. Or zero hammers banked actually. Right? So I have an extra archer and seven additional hammers. Alundi is burying my other city now. It's because slavery converts food to hammers so efficiently. And when you have a granary, every time that you grow, you get a certain amount of food for free. Every time that I whipped an Alundi, that this granary gave me eleven food for free. Right? That eleven food I can convert to hammers. Right? I can convert to hammers very quickly. It depends on how much more I have growing, it, how much more growing I have to do. But that 11 food I can convert to hammers at a much better rate um, than if I just work hammers alone. So yeah, so that's basically, and, and so I think the main team also mentioned that um, Plains Hills, um, I get, what was it again? Let me just read this comment real quickly. Um, With a granary, whips beats Plains Hills until population 6, where they even out. I think with a granary, whipping a grassland hills mine beats plains until um, way, way higher than that. I think it's something like population 20, when in terms of raw hammer output, um, plains hills becomes better than whipping grassland hills uh, with a granary. It's because that granary gives you so much food, and that's how, that's how powerful um, slavery converting food into hammers is. Um, but I might be wrong about this. Now, also keep in mind that this, in the early game, slavery is very straightforward to analyze because there aren't a lot of factors involved. You usually have, you know, not so great tiles. You know, two food, one commerce tiles, one food, two hammer tiles. These kinds of tiles. So in the early game, having an additional population usually is just it's just better to convert that into hammers. In the later game, having that extra population has a lot of other benefits. One key one that people usually miss is that having much bigger cities, like the difference between 24 and 25 population, that 25th population actually increases the value of your trade routes and things like that. Um, there are also fundamental um, population uh, limits at which you get like really big benefits. Like I believe at population 12, after you grow once from population 12, you, then you start to get this bonus to your trade routes. Um, in addition, tiles in the late game are much, much more valuable. So, for example, a town in the late game is something like two food, one hammer, um, you know, seven commerce with the right civics. So, that's crazy. That's a really great tile. Way better than a two food tile. So, these are all things to keep in mind. This is why slavery gets worse and worse as the game gets further on. Not only does it take it more food to grow your, your, your cities, um, it's better to have population in your cities because you're getting better tiles to work. You also get these trade route bonuses. And then also, you know, in the early game, you have this happiness cap. You know, uh, all of the food that I get um, once I'm at five population is not really worth any to anything to me. It makes sense to convert that food into hammers using slavery in the early game. Once I get more happiness to my happiness cap and I start to be able to grow my cities more, it might make sense to grow more. So, so yeah, that, that's kind of a very um, really intricate, in-depth kind of 
view into slavery. Um, you know, the me and team, I'd really love to hear what your opinion is on that. That, that comment was really striking to me because most of the comments that you leave are usually bulletproof from, from my perspective, and I learn a lot from them. That particular comment, I don't know, I didn't quite understand. So if you could give a little bit more clarity into what you meant by that, I think that'd be really awesome, and I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. And I think everyone who's watching these videos would have a lot to learn from, um, you know, how, how to think about slavery from, from your perspective. Um, so anyway, that's just a small addendum that I had. I wanted to go through this and just show you guys exactly how this slavery was working, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, my Hannibal Carthage uh, Carthaginian playthrough is getting uploaded right now, and you'll be able to see that soon. So uh, stay tuned for segment number four of that guy as well. Uh, again, this is Tenoy Sinha signing off. Thanks so much for tuning in.